this beautiful sanctuary. Um, and you, you really ought to see it to appreciate God's work. Um, but let's get started with, with the word. And, um, uh, first of all, let's uh, first give an honor to God, to um, our pastor, to um, minister, I mean, Reverend Wright. Robinson, I'm sorry, and to our, our deacons, members, and friends. Um, we're going to be looking in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, Mark chapter five, and we'll also be looking at 2 Timothy, the second chapter, Mark five, 2 Timothy two. Mark 5 and 2 Timothy 2. Mark 5, verse 25 through 28. And verse 25 said, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Amen. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. And verse 11 said, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not yet, he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. Amen. If I could give this a title, it would be The Undeniable Jesus. The Undeniable Jesus. I want to have a short little conversation with you today, well, bro. Um, I, I, I really want to ask a question. Um, have you ever been through something, a, a situation or a circumstance or had a problem and, and when it was fixed, you knew it wasn't natural. You knew it was nothing on your own power that did it. You knew that it couldn't happen through you. You knew it just wasn't natural. It was a supernatural fixing of your situation or circumstance or your problem. You knew that Jesus fixed it. We sing a song here and and we often do it on um, communion and, and the song is try Jesus and I, I'm here to ask you today to when when those circumstances and those situations come up to try an undeniable Jesus a Jesus that will come in and fix your situation without you even knowing that he fixed your situation. And in our story, well, let me tell you a story about me first. Um, back about in, about six years ago, um, I woke up one morning and, and couldn't hardly breathe and, and um, my son was living with me and I had to take him to to work that morning and, and I, I got in the passenger seat and he drove to his job and, and I struggled to get in the driver's seat after he got out and I drove myself back home. And when I got back home, I sat there. I was supposed to go to work and I, I was all determined to go to work, but I just sat there in the car and couldn't move, couldn't hardly breathe. And, and let me tell you, um, um, eventually, my job called me. 
Um, where are you? Um, why, why haven't you made it to work? And, and, and the, the thing is, I, I told my supervisor, I had a doctor's appointment that day and I, I, I just couldn't make it. I, I, I'm sitting in the car at home and I can't get out. I, I, I just can't get out. And he, so, he told me to just go into your doctor's appointment. Don't worry about coming in today. Okay, so I get to the, the, the doctor's office and, and I'm sit, still sitting in the car. And I parked outside the doctor's office. And I still could not pull myself together to get out the car. I mean, I sat there. My, my appointment was at 9. And then 10 o'clock came. And then 11 o'clock came. And it must have been around lunchtime, a nurse came out the building and she saw me, but she went on to her car. But let me tell you, she, for some reason, she said she turned around and saw me and came back and I, I opened the door and almost fell out the door. And, and she, she ran back inside the office and got a wheelchair and wheeled me inside the doctor's office, her and another nurse. And, and, and fast forward past the story, you know, I, I ended up in the hospital and they took care of me and, and, um, and things got a little better from there. But um, um, a few years down the road, maybe about a year ago, I went to another, another doctor's office. Now the doctor's office that I went to had ended up, the um, doctor took another position and closed up. So, this same nurse that came out to um, help me in was in this new doctor's office that I was in. And she said, hi, Mr. Smith, do you remember me? And I said, um, yes, I remember you. She said, we saved your life that day. And I said, um, ma'am, I have to be honest with you. Nobody saved my life but Jesus Christ that day. I said, when, when you came out, your determination was to get in your car and go to lunch. But for some reason, you came back. And I'm here to tell you, it was that reason was, I'm telling you, the reason was because of that undeniable Jesus. Because he turned her around and brought her back. And see, I can only say that no, the, the doctor that day didn't, even though he shut down all operations and worked just on me, even though all the nurses came in the room and they all worked just on me, they didn't save my life. The love of Jesus Christ saved my life that day. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, it's because I serve an undeniable Jesus. Psalms 34 and 30 and, and 19, I'm sorry, says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. See, that's, that's what we're working with. A Jesus that cares that much about you, that whatever circumstance that you're in, he'll save your life. He will save <coughs> Excuse me, your life. Now, we look at our story. Um, this this uh, certain woman, that's what the Bible calls her. See, it, it doesn't give her a name, but it gives her an issue. It said a certain woman with an issue of blood. See, we don't know who this certain woman is but we know her issue. So sometimes we have to be careful what we know about other people because we, we tend not to learn about them, but we learn about their issue. And we talk about their issue, brother so-and-so with the broken arm or, or sister so-and-so that had a rough life or, or, or brother so-and-so that, that uh, just can't get his finances straight. See, we know about their issues, but do we know them? So the, the Bible tends to hear, talk about 
this certain woman issue and how she suffered many things. And, and, and I, I just want to stop right there because um, it says she suffered many things. Things. And let, let's just read what it says here. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. See, she um, hinged everything on the things that she had or the things that she could um, bring forth. And, and all those things let her down. All those things didn't do her any good. It said not only did it not do her any good, it made her worse. Sometimes we we'll, we rely on things and, and try to to um, let our circumstances get better by the things that we have and, and the things that we um, put in front of our our Lord. But those things couldn't do her any good. See, she she suffered. Um, many things. Let's let's look at the, the the things that were in her way. Number one was people. Was people. She 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 went to many physicians, people, and tried to let the physician fix what no one else could fix. She went there. To many, not just one, but many physicians. Many. And then the next thing that couldn't fix her problem, her circumstance, her situation was money. The Bible says she spent all that she had. Sometimes money just won't do you any good. Sometimes money, I'm just going to put it this way. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. So you can, you can say my money will fix this and my money will do that. But guess what? That love won't get nothing done. That love of that money won't get nothing done. It didn't for her. Next thing. Next thing that really that really brought about things for her is what she had heard. The Bible said that she heard about Jesus. And so you, you have, to, have to look at this thing. You have to look at this thing in your mind's eye because um, she wasn't there when Jesus fed the 5,000. So she didn't witness any miracle. She wasn't there when, when he spat on the ground and healed the blind man. Uh, she, she wasn't there when, when, when Jesus, um, let me see, um, walked on water. She wasn't there when, when Jesus went walking across the sea on water in front of his disciples. She wasn't there when the very first miracle when he turned water into wine. She only heard about Jesus. See, that's the basis of our faith. The, the Bible says that so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, it, it, it's not always things that you see that's going to get you into a closer relationship with Jesus. It's what you heard about him. And she heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. And the Bible says in the 27th verse <laughs> that she came into the press. In other words, she walked into a sea of people behind 
Jesus Christ as he was going somewhere else. See, his, his priority wasn't her. His priority was somebody else. He was going to heal somebody else. But just because of what she heard, it gave her faith enough to go in and press and find her way to Jesus. Have you pressed your way to find Jesus? To find out how true he is how real he is and how he can heal you without even knowing that you need him. She just reached out and touched his clothes is what the next verse says. I'm no, sorry, 27 says. She reached out and touched his garment. And then she said, see, you got to speak faith. She said, if I may just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. You got to speak faith. You got to say it into existence. Knowing that he did not or was not on his way to heal her. He was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter. But because of what she heard, because of what she heard, she decided, this is my time. This is my time. And she reached out and touched his garment and was made whole. Philippians 1 and 29 says, for it it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. See, see when, when, when Paul wrote this in, um, in 2 Timothy about suffering, uh, he was letting us know that we got to go through some things. And when we go through some things, it's not just for us. We got to deal with some things, and it's not just for us. It's for others sometimes when they see what you're going through. And then they can believe in knowing how you believe in what you believe in. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm so, so excited about what happened with this, this certain woman when she realized that everything hinged on her faith in Jesus and, and what she heard about him. And, and I, I just want to ask you, who else do you know? Who else do you know that can heal a person when they're on their way somewhere else? can heal a person and take care of a person. Who else do you know can fix your situation when you can't hardly breathe? When you got um, CHF or congestive heart failure and you can't breathe. And who can fix your situation when you know nothing else uh, or, or anybody else but Jesus, who, do you, who else do you know that can take your circumstances and turn it around? Who else do you know that can, can come in your life when, when your finances are all messed up and, and you still live day by day by day? And you, you're wondering sometimes um, when, where I'm going to get my next meal, but yet... He still feeds you that day. He still feeds you that day. And then the next day comes and he feeds you that day. What Jesus, what, who else do you know? Thank you, Jesus. 
that could come in when the doctor said that 20 years ago, she might not be able to see. And, and 20 years later, you still can see. Who else do you know can allow you to go through a marriage breakup and you still yet have a smile on your face? Who else do you know can fix your circumstances like Jesus? You see, he's an undeniable Jesus. He's the one that if you tried him, he can fix it. Stop worrying about what things can do and what things have in your life. No, put your trust in Jesus. See, if you draw near to him, the Bible says he'll draw near to you. Thank you, dear Lord for fixing those situations in my life, for coming in my life when I had nowhere else to turn. Thank you, Jesus. And I just want to know, who else do you know? Who else that is undeniable like Jesus Christ? If you for some reason, do, do not know Jesus Christ and the pardoning of your sins. I ask you today to believe in and trust in an undeniable Jesus, one who can't be denied. When he fixed things in your life, you can't say something else did. You can't deny that it was his hand that came and turned your life around. You can't deny that it was him, the love that he showed you. Yes, sir. That fixed your situation. Yes, sir. Lord, I come to you now. That's what we need to be saying. I give my life to you now. That's what we need to be saying. Fix me and fix everything that's in me because you are my undeniable Jesus. And, and if you make that decision today, you can come by letter, you can come by baptism, or you can come by Christian experience. But you must come and give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to thank uh, Belro for allowing me to speak today and allowing me to tell you about the love of the one that loved me first and now how much I truly love him. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide and be with you all forever and ever. Amen.
suffering Oh, I heard a lot of pain and woe I told some of my friends Oh, but they didn't understand what I told them Jesus holding my holding my holding my hand oh, oh I can't even oh, walk oh, without you holding my hand oh love the joy the joy in the midst of trouble the peace in the midst of trying